Oh my god! Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Zeke is back! Zeke is back! Ooh, baby! So, I have been absent and MIA for way too long. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and thank you so much for coming back and seeing a new time lapse. This is my second acrylic painting, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's a commission piece uh, by a really lovely lady who's bought a uh, I think she's bought a necklace that I've made for me before and she's always been super supportive just commissions you know really make my heart sing I wanted to do something really special for her she wanted a painting that I had already sold uh, earlier in the year and basically I'm kind of recreating that but with a, like a little bit of a spin you know um, the other one was like a circle piece and this one's an oval it's a different creature it's kind of weird like recreating a piece but not so much you know like my background or my formal education is in fashion so a common saying that they have in fashion is same but different so <laughs> if you're designing for like a fashion house you have to create collections that have the same feel and tone but uh, are still different and that's uh i feel like um i've had my training in that and I was really excited to go back into my comfort zone of acrylic painting and painting fur and this is like the first time I guess you guys have seen me paint fur as well. I have a lot of fun painting fur so I think now after a couple of paintings I think I've kind of tackled the initial problems I had with fur. This is I think the first time I've like really been in a proper rhythm with painting and it feels so good being able to get back into it. I feel like my normal self. So I hope you guys appreciate this beautiful bird's eye view. I did have a couple of problems uh, filming uh, just with the lighting. So I apologize if like the flicker kind of annoys you or you see my head. I don't know. That's just the kind of the nature of it. And uh, I will try and figure out all those like boring technical things eventually. So Baby Balthazar, uh, I kind of intended it to feel like you're in this wild, swampy, acidic, desolate planet and you're squelching through. Imagine yourself in like a full body suit, you've got your breathing apparatus and you spread through the leaves and all the gunk and muck and then you find this little baby sitting there waiting for you and he's got his little bug friend that's gonna leap onto his back and you guys can go on like crazy beautiful adventures exploring this planet. That's kind of how I imagine it anyway. I would love to hear how you imagine the planet uh, that this baby Balthazar is on. That was the story that I had when I was painting it and that story kept on gnawing at the back of my mind. I really wanted to, to feel like you've discovered this really adorable animal and you guys are gonna go on amazing adventures. So I just wanted to have that like really joyful, really bright, colorful feeling behind the painting. I'm going through a really deep blue and pink phase at the moment. I think I've been obsessed with those colors for a long time. It's just that it's turning up a lot in my work and it's kind of subconscious with the colors that I use. It's funny how they kind of reveal themselves to you in that way. So you can see here I was trying to figure out what to do with the flowers in the hair or in the top and I initially was going to put horns in um, and for some reason I thought I don't know I'm going to try these flowers see how they go because I wanted to have mushrooms maybe growing out of the creature I wasn't sure at the time. In my initial sketch I put horns in 
I kind of gave the flowers a go for like a couple of moments, but then I was like, nah, I'm just gonna take those away. And yeah, I think I decided back onto horns. Horns just felt a little bit more appropriate. I was tossing up whether to do them or not because I had like the big teeth coming out of the mouth and I wasn't sure if that would be too much overkill really. But I think it, it works well and contrasts well with like the softness of the creature. I really like the playfulness of the tongue that's uh, poking out. That was definitely inspired by my cat. Sometimes she, when she's really relaxed, she sticks out her tongue. And when cats, I think when they stick out their tongue unknowingly and it's just like stuck out there, like they don't know that their tongue is physically stuck outside of their mouth, that usually indicates that they're really relaxed and happy. And that's the sort of body language that I wanted to translate into the piece as well. So filming this piece, I mean, I am new to filming big, long time lapses. I know I've, I have one acrylic piece and then another digital piece that took me quite a while that I've posted, but this felt like the longest acrylic piece so far. So it was a lot of footage and it's the first time you realize that makes you really realize how long it takes to paint these pieces. I I think I, um, I enjoy painting so much that I don't notice how long it takes me to paint these pieces and it was kind of shocking to realize how many hours are put into these pieces. So I think this piece ultimately maybe took 26 hours and that 26 hours is spread across I think two weeks. And also I had to squeeze it in with a bunch of other jobs that I'm working on. So yeah, it was actually a pretty labor intensive two weeks, but didn't didn't feel too intense. So yeah, I just thought it was uh, kind of crazy. You, you guys are seeing, you know, 26 hours of my life condensed in uh, 15 minutes or so. And that 26 hours also doesn't include, you know, the time that I am like contemplating and staring at the piece and brainstorming what colors to work. I also sketch in my sketchbook while I'm painting uh, to work out what colors work well. Uh, oh, also apologies for the weird lighting there. I was having a day where the clouds, so I film in natural light as well as, um, as, well as with lamps. So this particular day, the clouds were really not my friend. So apologies for that. So I initially started the bug with a purple, but that particular purple I don't paint with very often because it doesn't give you a very wide spectrum of tones, which gets really frustrating. So it's either super, super dark or super light. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's the way the human eye just can't pick up the different tonal variations in that particular color. But anyway, I was just like, nah, I'm going back to Old Faithful. Tarlo blue, good old Tarlo. It's, uh, <sighs> blues are incredible. You know, when you go to a paint shop, you don't realize how many blues there are. I don't know what it is about blue, but it just can, there's just such a wide spectrum of different tones and warmths um, that you can get with blue that uh, I don't feel like a lot of other colors can give you. With the bug as well, um, I thought it was really menacing and I kind of liked how that really contrasted and juxtaposed the softness of the bug. So I think they make the perfect little pairing.
the plants, because I had already painted a similar piece to this, I really wanted to experiment with uh, plants that were a lot different to what I normally paint. I was tempted to kind of recreate a lot of plants that I had already made before, uh, but it just felt, I don't know, really dull to me. And I, although I've done this like skin tone stick before, I haven't done it with like these weird circle elements in them. And I don't know, that skin, the skin stick. <laughs> uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Oh man. I just, I think it's really great seeing that skin tone brought into other elements that aren't just skin. It's very visceral and really creepy. And I don't know, man, that's just my aesthetic, you know? Like it really makes me live. I'm living. These orange pods were so difficult for me. I initially was gonna paint some flowers, uh, but they just didn't feel like they really went together with the piece. And um, I don't know, I like these apricot-y plants instead. They just felt like, uh, they just felt a little bit more appropriate to the world that's there, you know? They felt like a little bit more foreign. If I did flowers, it was just a little bit too delicate and there's already a big chunk of pink, a big, cute pretty animal in the middle it just needed something a bit strange you know it took me a long time to figure out how to paint it when you're painting uh, fictional plants you can use references but you're not really using them one for one you're kind of inspired by the reference and then you kind of have your own take. So it does take a while to figure out and flesh out like exactly where all the folds are gonna go. And um, yeah, it's kind of difficult. I do wanna study up and um, study a lot more plants because I feel like that would help a lot in the future. But I'm trying to get this like balance of creating my own creatures and plants without being too influenced by nature. So, you know, the more you study, the f less I feel like you're totally original. Uh, for me, being original and having something really unique is really important to me. I just don't feel like it's uh, true to my Zeke brand to have things that are very similar or like are on trend or anything like that. So. I don't know, originality is really high in my books and that's really important to me. So in the past, I think I resisted to studying a lot because I didn't want to lose that original take and that like unique take that I had. It's, I think all comes in a balance, you know, maybe you want, now that I'm no and I'm, uh, now that I'm really aware of that, I don't think I'll lose that, hopefully. I really love the color balance that I got with this piece I really took a what you don't see on here is you know me really considering what colors I should be using and um, really trying to figure out what colors would balance one another so they're not so so it feels like it's got a rainbow in it but it's not such an obvious rainbow I'm really happy with the colors how they uh, balance off the pink and the blue it's really difficult when you have two big colors there and you're like and you want a variety of other colors, so uh, getting different tone, tones of warm colors was my biggest option, and obviously having the lime green there too. Now these worms, you can probably recognize, the, the lime green worms you could probably recognize from my other piece. I don't know, there's they're something like really sinister and uh, cute about them. I almost can hear them squealing too, you know, like I can hear them like growing out of the ground and squealing. <laughs> uh, it's a bit creepy, but you know, that's how I roll.
the final touches, a couple of dots here and there, some final highlights. Oh, I'm so happy with this piece. You guys have no idea how like I felt really lost recently and I think the solution was to just go back to painting. I just love acrylic painting. I feel like myself again, you know? And I don't normally add my signature, but I felt like, I don't know, I want to get more into the habit of adding it. I normally paint or like sign the back of a canvas, but yeah, I don't know, I wanted to paint. I wanted to sign it for some reason. Maybe uh, the true sign of me being really proud of a piece, uh, I actually sign. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna try and pump out a lot more videos and a lot more content. Yeah, let me know if you like them. I would love for you to thumbs up. You know, all of that helps so much in the algorithm. And if you really truly like my work, then I really would appreciate it. I will catch you guys later. Love ya, bye.